conversation, but it's also important that each of you hear uh, what I am talking about today. So as uh, the beautiful uh, Isabella did for the introduction, I am Tanisha Carruthers. I am an attorney by day. What I like to say, I'm an attorney by day, a planner pusher by night, okay? <laughs> so um, sometimes, you know, I'm doing things in my criminal practice. I also do family law, business transaction, or I'm trying to convince you to buy a planner. Um, it just depends on the day. Layered Living Planner is our company, is our company's planner. Herspace Co. is the name of our organization. A little bit about Herspace. Herspace Co. It was founded by my business partner and I, and it was created as a space that we needed as modern women. We found ourselves, I was in law schools, getting ready to study for the bar exam. Um, my business partner, she is in divinity school, just had a baby, and preparing for marriage, and life was what we would call cuckoo. Okay. Um, and we had very little for ourselves. We didn't have a lot of time to develop ourselves and where we would love to have life coaches and be able to stop and go to therapists and counseling and all of those things are very valuable. But we just found that because we were on the go, what we like to call modern women, we just did not have the time to pour into ourselves. So we had an idea. Our company's name was Her Space. So we said, let's create a space that's on the go. Thus, we created the Layer Living Planner. Now, while it is your traditional planner that has calendar and it allows you to have your to-do list, it also identifies 12 layers of each one. We devote a layer a month, and we'll talk a little bit more about the layers, uh, but I do want to explain the concept of the Layer Living Planner so you don't think it's your ordinary planner. In there, not only do we do what we call pre-work, which we have women that usually partner with other women, we call them planner partners, Two women, sometimes four, they'll get together. They will start and they'll do the beginning we call pre-work, and they'll work through that. Every month, they'll look at a layer that we have identified and they'll do the coursework. Then from there, we have weekly tasks that remind you, hey, you were minded and you were committed in January, right? Because by the time June comes, how many of us have forgot those things we said we're gonna do in January, right? So in June, we say, hey, remember you said this month you were going to commit to calling an old college roommate or taking yourself out on a date. And we do that every week. Then we have every quarter which says, hey, how did you do all quarter? What was your best month? What was your best event? What made you feel good? We call them glows and grows. What was your glow moment from the quarter? What was your grow moment? Maybe something we need to work on, but it's okay. And then what are your new goals for the next quarter? And then at the very end of the planner, we do a reflection. How was your year? Some people, sometimes we have very rough years. And sometimes you need to just take a nice uh, uh, debrief and get ready for the next year. Sometimes you have a dynamic year, you want to try to capture some of those nuggets. And sometimes you just need a space to write it all out. And that's what the Layer Living Planner is, okay? So it's a little bit about the planner. We do offer them online. You'll hear me talk about them, and I have a couple from the 2019 year that are up here for any women that you want to kind of look through them. All right, let's talk about today. Today we're going to talk about myths and truths. One of the things about the Layer Living Planner is that we wanted to debunk some of the myths that we believe as women that we carry along with ourselves. You know, like your purse, those little things that kind of get lost in the very bottom of the purse. They're in there, you forget that they're in there, but you're carrying them with you. That's what we're gonna talk about today. What are the myths, what are the truths, and how do we live those things intentionally, just like we talk about in our planner? How many of you have ever either said this to yourself or you've heard someone say this? I am not enough. And that is something we carry with ourselves. I've had um, Her Space Co. We work with adults now. We started out with kids, actually, young girls. We used to have a summer camp that we would take young girls to the woods in Kentucky, and we would just do self-development self for girls. And you will be surprised at the age we start hearing this. We're talking seven, eight-year-olds who are saying, I am not enough. And so here we say, that is a myth. We call that a lie. No matter how many times you've heard it, you've said it, or even if you believe it, it is not the truth. It may feel like the truth. So instead, we encourage you to change your language. So when you feel like I am not enough, instead we say, I am more than enough. That's the truth. In her space, that's what we believe about every single woman. Regardless of what you have done, any past mistakes, 
That's the identity that we actually carry. That's our first word, identity. I am more than enough. Part of identity, first, is identifying who you are and what you believe in. All right, so here's kind of one of my sayings. I'll break it down and tell you a funny story. Some people think it's funny, but do it with your heart or have the heart not to do it. I'm going to say that again because it sounds very simple, right? Yes. But do it with your heart or have the heart not to do it. I'll tell you about my 30th birthday party. It was a couple years ago. My friend and I, we laugh about it now, but at the time it was not very funny. I found myself at my 30th birthday party. I have been looking forward to this birthday party. I'm 30, it's the turn of a new decade. This is gonna be amazing. And I'm at a birthday party that my best friend has planned for me, and I don't know anyone in the room. So I think it's a joke. I said, okay, well my friends are gonna come around the corner. Okay, well, they're on their way. Nope. So I'm sitting there in this part of them, no one that I know. They were all invited. It was actually someone else's birthday party that I kind of got rolled into. And so I'm sitting there, I ordered dinner, and I just say to myself, Tanisha, enjoy the day. But it didn't feel good to me. And I'm sitting there, and my feelings are getting hurt, and I'm such an internalizer. I'm sitting there, I'm still smiling, I'm still happy. All right, and but then I said to myself, not in your 30s, not in your 30s, and I am such a people pleaser. I'm a Libra, so I'm all about balance and scales, and I'm an attorney, so scales of justice. I'm all about everything about me is balance. So I'm sitting there, you don't want to interrupt it, you know, you don't want to be the person to walk, you know, get up and leave, but it didn't feel good to my heart, it didn't make me feel good, and I said, not anymore. So I politely got up from the table, told the waitress to cancel my order, and I walked home. And I walked home. And people were like, what are you saying? Actually, I wasn't. It was the best part of my birthday. I walked home, I was sorry. It was nighttime. I mean, God, I had a good walk. But in that moment, I decided if it did not agree with my heart, I would have to have the heart not to do it. And how many times do we find ourselves in those spaces? Sitting on that board that we really hate. It's not progressive anymore. The chairman of the board, they're not moving forward. Or working a job that we really hate. Going to lunch with coworkers because we go every Wednesday, but you realize you don't really like your coworker. <laughs> but you still keep going to lunch with them, right? Um, we find ourselves doing things that do not feel good to us. And so I committed to myself, and I'm challenging you all to do the same. For me, it was turning 30, literally. But stop sitting at tables that no longer serve you. Mm. Regardless how hard it is, have the heart to push yourself away from the table and say no thank you, mm. okay? And so doing that, the first thing we have to figure out is what is your heart's desire? How many of you truly can say that you're that in tune with yourself, your heart, your body, that you know all of your desires? I'm there with you, okay? But it takes work, and that's when we talk about the layer living planner. How do we get in touch with our heart? We do that because it's very overwhelming, okay? We do that by helping you out by giving you 12 layers, 12 areas in the planner that we say, let's examine your heart, your soul, your mind in 12 areas. And every month we commit to those areas. First month, your dreamer. January, what did your heart say about your dreams and desires? We even challenge you to go back to your childhood. What did you want to be when you were a kid? Before they told you you couldn't. Now some of us may have to alter that, okay? Like I know for myself, I wanted to be a fighter, fighter, a teacher during the school year, and a model when I retired. Okay, so we're gonna work on those things, right? Um, not quite, but there were some things, in all of those things, I wanted to help people. And so getting back to that, I found that my dreams and desires usually always point back to me providing a service, okay? And so we look at these layers and we say, let's do some hard work. Let's figure out who you are in terms of what you believe. Or do you believe what they told you to believe or what you always kind of believe if you're going along with it? Funny story again, well, I found myself sitting one day with my sister where I had just gone to the grocery store. That was our deal. I would do the grocery shopping. She would do a lot of the cooking, just depends. And I'm 
grab a banana, because she asked me for one, and I'm eating a banana. And as I'm eating a banana, I sit there and I realize and I say out loud, I don't like bananas. <laughs> My sister looked at me and she said, what do you mean? So she eats bananas all the time. I said, yeah, I do. But I realized I don't like bananas. And a funny story, I was talking to my mom this morning. I'm talking about my speech and what I'm going to say. And I said, I'm going to tell them I don't like bananas. <laughs> or on FaceTime, you don't like bananas. <laughs> like, Tanisha, you always eat bananas. I'm like, yeah. But I realized I eat them out of routine. Everyone in the family eats bananas. They have grabbed one. We eat bananas. That's what we do. And it was time sitting there eating a banana that this is it's mushy, it has no flavor. I mean, I'm just tearing this banana apart. Um, and, and it's funny, but it really helped me to really hone in on realizing that I need to get in touch with Tanisha today. Bananas have always been a thing of our family. Banana pudding, bananas, milk, and sugar. I know, don't judge. Um, but I don't like this. And Tanisha of today has to do some hard work to figure out what do I really like. What are areas that as we evolve, you see one of our uh, months is devoted to evolution. As we evolve, whether we go from singlehood to motherhood, to when the children leave the nest, to full-time working for someone, to full-time entrepreneurship, as we evolve, we need to keep doing the hard work to figure out what does, insert your name, of today, what's your heart? And in that way, I know when I need to walk away from the table I can't walk away from the table if I don't know if I like what's being served, okay? And so, in doing so, I want to talk a little bit more about the layers. Each one is devoted to a month, but again, just challenging you to study yourselves. Study yourselves. How many of you, just raise your hand and keep your hand up, um, may have had a high school diploma, okay? GED, keep your hand up, keep your hand up. Everyone keep your hand up. Um, college degree which could be associates, uh, bachelors, masters, keep your hand up, doctorate, um, PhD, okay, uh, a certificate in water coloring, <laughs> somebody here, okay? Um, what that lets me know is that each of you, you studied something, which means you're capable of studying yourself. You've done some type of coursework, which means you owe it to yourself to get in tune with yourself and study yourself to figure out what you like, what your heart is saying, and what your body, your mind, your spirit is saying about you of today. All right, number two, the second myth. I am Superwoman. No one else? Okay. So I love Marvel. Anyone watch the last oh, Marvel? Yeah. Yes, okay. I almost gave you guys a spoiler, but I won't do that. I want to do it, okay? I don't want any hate emails to my inbox. But I said that to say, women struggle with this. We find ourselves trying to be superwoman. And for me, I'll be transparent. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. It was a badge of honor to me to be able to say I did it all. That's right. Especially if I didn't even help. Because then I'm a self made woman. Yes. I am strong in all my glory. And then I turned again, 30, and I realized that I'm tired. <laughs> I value sleep. Like, my knees hurt sometimes. Okay? My back isn't as strong as I thought it once was. Okay? So carrying the weight of being superwoman, it, it, it's great, it sounds amazing, but the reality of living that is too much. And many of us are cracking under the pressure of being a superwoman. Anxiety is at an all-time high. We're having panic attacks because we're just feeling so overwhelmed. I call it my concept of over and under. Overworked, underpaid. Overwhelmed, underperforming. We always have this duality that we feel like we're living in. I'm busy, but I don't feel productive because we're trying to do it all. So again, we're challenging that language. Instead of saying that I am superwoman, I say to you, I'm an intentional woman. I'm intentional about my day. I'm intentional about my time. I'm trying my best. I'm giving it my all, but I am not superwoman. I'm the best woman. I'm the best version of myself. But super, eh, I'm gonna leave that 
to, you know, to a different lifetime, okay? And so in being intentional, I kind of gave a definition of what it means to myself. And so intention is having the mental fortitude to discipline myself in targeted areas. I'm gonna say that again. It's the mental fortitude I make up in my mind to discipline myself in targeted areas. Because again, I can't do it all. So while I would love to be able to cook clean, go to the gym, <coughs> be a community activist, change the world, serve, you know, and solve world hunger, also walk the dogs, <laughs> adopt the cats, and also help build green spaces, I have to find targeted areas and be intentional about those things. I remember I called my co-founder, uh, Brittany, and I was stressed out because I could not, and I'll be very transparent, I couldn't get a handle of my laundry. Maybe you guys are great at that. I, I struggle. I get them washed, but it takes five or seven business days to get the uh, phone call. <laughs> five or seven business days. And so I said, how in the world are you, which is funny that we do this for the phone because it's not with the phone. Like, anyway, and I said to you, I said, how in the world are you getting it all done? My laundry is piling. Clean laundry, but it is piling. She said, oh, well, Tanisha, I'll tell you. I had an honest conversation with my husband. In this season, that might not be my best area. I said, you told your husband that? And she said, yeah. Because in this season, there are some other things that have my area, that have my attention, excuse me. And so what we've had to do is understand that in some areas, I may not perform the best. And it's okay. Because just like all seasons, guess what? They'll come back around. And in some areas, I will be the best intentional in that area. So there are going to be some seasons where my laundry will get done when it is hot. I will fold it while it is warm. But until then, until that season comes, and I have to be okay with that. And I have to be okay with that. Because if not, we find ourselves again trying to do it all. When this is an opportunity that you can rest, maybe you're trying to fold the laundry. Maybe you're trying to do a little extra when really that could be your moment of self-care. Go get your nails done. <coughs> Work on your layered living planner and do some goal setting. Call in a girlfriend that you really enjoy, but you say, hey, I'm too busy to talk to right now. Are you too busy or you're not intentional? And the understanding that everything doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so in this intention, I'm a person that likes to put some action with it because it, this all sounds great, but how do we actually apply it? In the planner, we do, and women love this part of the planner, we call it a word of the year. If you have Instagram, we would also love to see yours. What women do, they'll take a picture of their word of the year and they'll post it on Instagram with the hashtag W-O-T-Y, for the, some of you, word of the year, W-O-T-Y, hashtag W-O-T-Y, and they'll share their word of the year, why they chose it, and how they plan to um, utilize that for the year. So right now, I want to do that with you all. Okay, I know we're six months into the year. Maybe you already have your word of the year. Not sure, but if you don't, I do want to spend some time this morning, let's set our word of the year for the rest of the year. Okay. I had someone tell me that it's not how you end, it's how you, I mean, it's not that how you start, it's how you end. All right, so maybe our first six months, we're a little scattered and tattered. Let's make the last six months our best six months. Let's set some direction to this. Let's set a word of the year that we're going to choose. If you want to share with us on Instagram, we would love to see it again. Just post it and put W-O-T-Y as a hashtag. We'll find it. We always jump on people's word of the year. Um, and then... Let's commit to a new habit to make sure where the year comes to play. So let's talk about mine. While you guys are thinking about yours, I really I want you guys to take some pen, some time to think of your word of the year. My word of the year was improvement. It was simple. I wanted to improve. 
um, thankful enough to be, again, I have a successful law practice. My business with her space was going well, but now we're in the area of improving that. How do we have better systems, better uh, processes? So that was my goal. So how, what was my habit? My word of the year was improvement. My habit, I am painful to say this, was waking up early. I was the person that was almost late to uh, high school every day. Okay, I am that person. Um, but in order to improve, I had to create a habit that went along with that word. And so for me, I just found that I couldn't do enough waking up at 8, 9, 10 o'clock. I had to get up at 5, 5.30, sometimes 6 on a late day, and that I started my day with intention. Okay? So think of, some word, think of a word of the year and a habit that you're going to implement to make sure that your word of the year comes to life that you're living with the intention and that you have a word that is guiding your year. And if it doesn't align, having the heart to walk away. Some women had some really great words while some were simple, like of course improvement, determination. Um, some women really dug deep. Fulfillment. They found that they were not being fulfilled in all the areas of their life. They did not have an area where they could say they were being fulfilled. They spend so much time and energy giving out, pouring into others. And so they committed this year to finding spaces and places that gave to them. Some women started with purchasing a planner. That was their small investment for the year. Okay? I'll give you a couple minutes. Anyone want to think of a word of the year and or share it with us? Oh, I see a hand. Thought you guys were leaving to myself. All right. Okay. Give a word of the year? Good morning, ladies. Good morning. My word of the year is celebrate. Um, I've decided that it's time for me to celebrate me as a caregiver, a wife, a mom, uh, Mia, because I'm too young looking to be called grandma. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I took care of everybody else and I left me behind. And so this year, I'm celebrating me. Anyone else briefly want to share what their word of the year is? I see a couple more hands. We have a little time. My word of the year was or is relationships. I realized that uh, past couple of years I've said no to a lot of my girlfriend circles because I let my work-life balance kind of fall out of the way. And so this year um, I'm saying yes more than I say no and actually not calling at the last minute to say I can't do it. You know, you kind of give yourself a way out. But relationships, love God, love others, love myself, because relationships matter. Those are my hashtags for this year. I love it, that's good. And that's important. Um, relationships, you always think about partner relationships, right? Your spouse, your partner, well that is important, but friendship is probably, and again, that, Having a business partner that is also my best friend has been the cornerstone. Uh, friendship has been everything that we build upon because there's nothing like having a good girlfriend to journey along uh, life and you kind of do life with. And so I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that relationships are number one. Was he? Good morning. My word of the year is going to be self love. Um, I'm from Florida. I'm a student at Andrews University. I just graduated from a Master in Divinity. May 5th, and I'm working on the second one, Community International Development. But on the day of my graduation, I have a 15-year-old daughter. She found me on the floor, a basa. And um, because I was so stressed out, I didn't have time to eat, and in the middle of the night, I pass out in the kitchen. So I decided that I'm going to care for myself better. Anyone else? My word is heart, because I realize I have been so distant to people. I seem like I'm close to them, but I, I've always kept my uh, distance. And I realize to build relationships and have the self-love too, I need to open up my heart to other people. So I've been working on that, and when you said, you know, commit to have it, I just made a note to be sure I compliment at least one person every day. I love it. Anyone else? Um, my word is acceptance. So I think I have always 
always sort of fought my situation, so I lost my husband a few years ago to cancer, and rather than accepting what is still before me and my, our wonderful children, I was angry and you know kind of stuck in that place. Um, so it's that, and I was also an attorney, I'm now an artist, and I struggled for a while just feeling like I didn't have this identity that I had before with my job. And I definitely struggled with the superwoman thing, because I had a keychain <laughs> with superwoman. So it's accepting that I'm that superwoman and, um, and kind of working towards that. So. Yeah. Um, my work's probably untangled. I actually have a lot of energy, um, and I'm always like saying yes to new experiences and you know being on projects or helping people out with board committees, but um, I'm tired too. So <laughs> this year I've tried to be really mindful about what I've committed myself to. I have a microphone in my hand right now because typically I have a mic up in front of all people. Um, I second guess myself a lot. Um, I'm always afraid of the what ifs. And um, I tried to implement it since January, but I'm going to be better about it for the second half of the year. Just taking those chances, taking that leap of faith, knowing that not everything will work out perfectly, but enjoying the journey. And so, Amy, so I have uh, another story. We got ready to launch our planner the first year. And so again, my business partner name is Brittany, and we're sitting there and we're freaking out because we don't know who's gonna buy the planner. And maybe this is the time to, buy, to launch the planner and is this the right direction? Or are these the right colors? Is this the right pattern? And we're literally just getting ready to scratch the entire idea because this is not the right time. And her husband, who's always in the room, so we call him our pseudo business partner. Um, and every once in a while, he'll just sit there, he won't say a word, and then he'll just say something that's so profound. And we're going at it, we're getting ready to just go ahead and decide to scratch the idea, start something else, because this isn't it. And he says, you guys have analysis paralysis. <laughs> You know, and I thought about that when you said that, Amy, because if we're not careful, we will second guess ourselves as women so often that we get analysis paralysis. We can already see the end before we begin. We knew no one was going to purchase the planners. They would hate it. There are other planner companies. Bad idea. Let's scratch. He's like, you guys have analysis paralysis. Sometimes you got to just do it, launch it, and see what happens. Okay, a little more about the planner. We purchased a small number the first year to sell, and I kid you not, our conversation was, we knew enough family members and friends that would purchase those. <laughs> that was our own. I said, okay, to my cousins in Michigan, and our college network, and your family in Ohio, we can sell these, like we're good. And that's how we decided our first year, uh, numbers. And then people started purchasing that we didn't know. And we grew from there, and it, it was amazing. And the next year, we're like, okay, well, maybe our cousins will buy again, and then they'll tell a friend, okay? So we'll do double the numbers this time, just only double. And we sold out in two months. Um, thank you. And um, this is when we said, okay, we gotta stop playing with this. We had a person email us and say, hey, I was on the train in the UK. I seen someone with your planners. We went to your website and you're sold out. Do you have any more? Like the UK, on a, you know. So for that, it was a mind blowing experience to say, hey, it was something that we were once getting ready to scratch because we did not have the vision to see where it was going. To here we are trying to fill uh, international borders. And the third year, we're like, okay. We're on to something. We can probably do triple our numbers this year. Might go a little slow, but we can do it this year. We sold out in two weeks, okay? Um, and we're very grateful for that. But, um, and so this year, but okay, all right, let's stop, you know, <laughs> we have something here. Um, and so we're very grateful for that. We're very grateful that women see the intention that we put into this planner. We wrote every word, every single part of it was an extension of our hearts because we knew what women needed because we knew what we needed. Um, to the point that my best friend and I, we actually had to have a cool down moment because 
uh, we were arguing about the size of the triangles on the front cover. Um, she thought they should be bigger and I thought they should be smaller to be less distracting for women. And so we just decided to leave that alone and come back to the layer. Okay. And so it, I say that in a joking way, but that level of intention is, is what we put into the planner because that's what we want you to get out of it. Every single part of it, right down to the small designs, we were intentional about. We didn't want to be too bold for some women, and we also wanted to be kind of bold for some women that may struggle in that area of being a little more um, fearless. Okay? So we're asking that you guys take that same level of intention and you live that out every day. Okay, so our next myth. I am better because I'm busy. Um, the young lady in the back, I didn't catch your name. Becky just said, um, I find myself always doing something. And sometimes that is exciting, new projects. Um, there, there's an excitement of being a part of different things. And sometimes we feel that that validates us. The more I do, the better of a person I am. I'm giving to all these different programs. I'm assisting, being busy. <laughs> I'm, I'm being productive, and that is a lie. Because sometimes we are just busy bodies, as my grandmother would call them. You're just a busy body. But can you really say that you're actually seeing productivity in those areas? Are you fulfilling a need, and or are you being fulfilled? As women, we have to remember there needs to be an exchange. It can't just be you, the only one giving out. Are you receiving in that space? Or are you just being busy? And so that's the myth. That's the little thing we carry with us. And, and I remember I was talking to someone, and I, that was my favorite line. Oh, Tanisha, are you going to can I'm busy. I'm busy. Can't make that, I'm busy. And, and <laughs> I mean, I'm busy. And I remember someone saying that's not to brag about. You know, and it took me a little second to regroup. But they went on to explain being busy is not a bragging being productive, now that means something. Being fulfilled, being busy, anyone can be busy. So now, our truth. Our truth is that I am better because, because I am becoming, okay? So instead of being busy, we say we're becoming. I'm becoming more self-aware. I'm becoming more involved in things that actually fulfill me. Becoming means that I'm intentional about the busy work that I'm doing. I'm not just busy, I'm productive. Because even when we think about the concept of being busy, what does a busy body do to your spirit? What does a busy body do to your mind? If I had to say, when I'm super busy and things are on the go and I'm doing all these things, I usually have a scattered spirit. Busy body, scattered spirit. My emotions are up and down. I'm trying to adjust from one thing to the next, never really getting a footing on any of it. Busy body, scattered spirit, and a messed up mind. Have you ever found yourself maybe snapping at one person because you're still mad from the last meeting? Um, she made you upset, and then your kids get in the car and they ask you for McDonald's. How dare they? <laughs> right? But really, it's that messed up mind because you're so busy. And you didn't leave any room in between your last meeting and the time you had to pick up the kids. Something I found, and I know it's not traditional, but sometimes I leave meetings early. You know that end part of the meeting, you kind of just talk about, kind of just the kind of fluff of the meeting? I found that I excused myself from those, that part of the meeting just to give me a small break between my next transition. Okay, so find out, instead of being busy, how can we be becoming? One thing that we do in the planner when it comes to becoming is we do what we call mile markers or quarterly check-ins. We do quarterly check-ins. Every quarter, if you guys take a look at it, we have what we consider, it's kind of like a, a rubric or a grading scale. How did you do in this area? It's a check-in. How am I actually doing with the things that I set out to do? I said that my dreams and desires, every morning I was gonna get up and go to the gym. How are you actually doing with that? And we kind of, it's kind of fun, we say,
say, are you do a go girl? Like, you'll get there. Is it you got it girl? Or you are getting it girl, right? Which one is it? And sometimes we have to do that self check. Are we busy? We're so busy, we're not making time for the things that we said we were going to do. Uh, I had a conversation recently and I was telling someone, I said, by the time you go work your nine to five, which it's okay because some of us still have to work nine to fives, okay? By the time you work your nine to five, you go to lunch with a coworker you don't like, you sit on the board that's stressful, but you've always sat on the board, you've been on the board for five years at this point. Maybe you're involved in a church ministry because you've always been involved in that church ministry. This is kind of what you do, you fly on Thursday. By the time you do all of that and you get home at nine o'clock at night, how much energy do you have for the dream? How much energy do you have for the business plan? To write the proposal. If you're anything like me, your creative juices are gone. You spent 80% of your time on things that did not serve you. And while I would like to say that you can always change that, so, you know, I'm not telling you to quit your job, okay? <laughs> Um, but there are small things that you can do to get some of that time back. Whether it is waking up earlier, so that when you go to your nine to five, you've already had two hours of productivity on your own dream before you go work nine to five. Or maybe it's cutting and trimming some of the fat from those things that you no longer enjoy. So that way when you get home a little earlier, you now can fulfill some of those things that you want to become. So the goal, and this is a big concept that we always use when we talk about the improvement of a woman and the myth of being busy, is that my goal, I have one goal, is to be better today than yesterday. I can't be superwoman. Would love to be, but I can't. But my goal is to be better today than yesterday. Talking to my business partner again, maybe she is my life coach. <laughs> but I talked to my business partner and I'm like, you know, this to-do list, it just keeps growing. And I love pins, and so I have it color-coded. Black is this, blue is that, and red is when I'm done. And it's just not enough red on the paper. The to-do list is just growing and growing. And she said, you know what I did, Tanisha? She said, I threw the to-do list away. That, you know, that, that made me nervous. And she said, sometimes I just have to put it down and realize that my goal for today is to get done what's in front of me. And so that helped me a lot with understanding my day and categorizing my day. Now, I still have my to-do list, but understanding that my goal for today, it may not be getting every single thing done, and that's okay. It's a concept, and it's not really, I grew up in church, don't know about any of you guys, but I, I'm what we call a church baby. We went on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for youth night. We didn't get our Fridays off, except for special programs, okay? Um, <laughs> And so because of that, we were always taught, and I believe in God's grace. And many of us have heard about God's grace and that God's grace is sufficient. And while I believe that, I realized I was never taught about self-grace. God gives me grace. I give grace to other people. But Tanisha also needs to give grace to Tanisha. And what I mean by that is that, yes, I have 355,000 things on the to-do list. And if I only get 10 of them done, give myself grace enough to understand that there's a tomorrow. And that all the things that I'm not perfect in, that maybe I feel short in, there's always another opportunity to get those things done. And if not, also understanding that there may be someone else out there that can get that done. Maybe that's someone else's assignment. And maybe you trying to be superwoman to get it all done is blocking another woman who's supposed to be doing that. You know, maybe you sit on that board for the last 10 years that you hate. Maybe there's a woman in the wings that would actually excel in that position. But because you're burned out, and that's okay. That's when you give yourself that grace to say, I love what you do, and I'm going to be a financial partner, but right now, my time, I just can't give them that space anymore. Okay. And so that's how I commit to being better today than yesterday. Self-grace is a big part of that. I say I'm leaving work today at 6 o'clock, and I try to get as much done as I can. And by 6 o'clock, I say, this is my stopping point. And I'm okay with that. 
it's hard, especially if you do have that underlying perfectionism, that superwoman syndrome, walking away from an unfinished project can be difficult, but it's all about me wanting to improve myself and be intentional with my time. Um, one thing that I also talk about in doing being better today than yesterday is including downtime during my day. I have a colleague, um, she's also a criminal attorney, and she shuts her door and does yoga. And so when you think about the, the demands of being a criminal attorney, sometimes it gets very stressful for us. And she closes her door in the middle of it all, and she does downward dog. <laughs> and I think that it is amazing that she's that in tune with herself that I'm getting to the point of overload. And I'm no longer productive to my clients. I'm no longer productive to myself. I have children at home. I want to leave a little bit for them when I get home as well. I need to take a moment and pause. Like I said, also for me, I leave meetings early. How can I take a couple minutes to myself to, to take care of the vessel that I am? And if you're no good for you, everything else, no matter how busy, you, you, you lose your ability to be productive. One thing also, um, if you guys notice with our layers, and I think I want to go back to that slide really quickly. We use the word her in all of our uh, layers. You guys catch that? <laughs> okay. So we use the word her because we truly believe that she, her, I am in the root of all things. And so we do traditionally, and even with this, we wanted to look at some areas that people think that women cannot excel in. And so we also wanted to break the stereotypes. One of the things that we, and my favorite month is probably investor, because there's this myth out there that women can't handle money and finances and math and that we're not good in that area. And again, that's another one of our myths that we want to debunk. So we spent an entire month talking about what your finances are, what's your plan, what's your goals, how do you grow your money, what are upper areas of opportunity for you in terms of your finances. And so these are the areas that we look at and we say to ourselves, how do we identify where we want to go? What work do we do to get there? And making sure that we're living that intentional life. Okay, a little bit real quickly, I don't know if you guys have social media or Instagram. If you do, I would ask that you guys follow us on Instagram. Follow us, our email address is there, our website is there. It is important that you surround yourself with women that are intentional, women that desire the same things as you. And one way that you can do that, even if you're not a planner person, I do have a best friend that said, you know, Tanisha, I'm going to buy the planner. I tell you now, I'm not going to use it. <laughs> um, she's like, I just know that I'm not. But I'll tell you what, this year, she said, Tanisha, I'm, I'm dedicated. I want to have the best, I want 2020 to be the best year I've ever had. And I'm going to do it this time. I said, okay. Um, and, and so it just depends on how intentional you are with your life. But either way, we want you to stay connected to women. It's important that you find a community of women that can be, whether it's your planner partner or just your partner in life. In her space, we provide those, we provide those communities. Even if it's online, um, what we have found with many of our women that are connected to her space, whether it's via the planner or other events and, and spaces, they gather together, they get together. There's a conversation. How are you handling work-life balance? And that is the conversation. We're trying to figure this out together. We're journeying as women. And so we always encourage you to stay connected to her space or stay connected to any space. Spaces like this one, I first want to applaud you all for being here. Because that lets me know that you're committed to yourself. That hey, I'm gonna spend eight hours in the middle of a work week. If you're anything like me, just leaving work is not that easy. But you were intentional about it. Some of us traveled. That lets me know right there that you are intentional about your self-development. And so I'm encouraging you to go the next step. Continue that development. Stay committed throughout the year. If you have a dream, launch it. Find a woman who can be your we woman. We traveled after last year uh, launch of the planners and the success. 
we decided we were gonna take an owner's retreat in Arizona, and we tell the story of neither one of us are outside people. We don't do the outdoors, but we were in Arizona, and you have to go hiking in Arizona, right? You gotta go hiking in Phoenix. And as we got ready to climb the mountain, my, um, and don't tell her I told you this, but my best friend was terrified. She's like, Tanisha, bad idea, bad idea. Nope, looks like lion, tigers, and bears, okay? I'm not doing it. And I'm at the bottom of the mountain, of course, screaming, do it, you got it, you can do this, like, go. And later on, she talked about how for her, it's an important reminder to have a go girl in your corner. A person that when it looks terrifying, and it, maybe it is, there's somebody at the bottom of the mountain screaming, go girl, do it, you got it. You can't come back down here, right? You gotta go that way. And so for us, we encourage you to find that go girl, whether it's being connected to women in spaces virtually, keep attending uh, events like this, purchasing the Layer Living Planner, either way, find your go girl. Debunk the myths in your lives. All the lies that you have told yourself, your family has told you, friends have told you, society has told you, we're asking you to be intentional about Tell each and every one of them no, and speak of the truth that you have. One thing we're also offering to you all, you see at the bottom, we launch our pre-sales for the 2020 planner in August. And I do encourage you, if it's something you're interested in, we do have a few up here. Um, don't wait. Like I said, we are, we're grateful we sell out very fast. But we also wanted to offer you guys a 10% code. That if you guys decide to purchase in August, you guys is entering the code Real Bross Ladies, and you guys will receive a 10% off of being here. And I told my business partner I wanted to do that because I said I'm so excited that there are so many women who are already committed to the journey. So I just want to give you a little incentive. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to our workshop. And more importantly, that setting your 2020 off by living intentionally and, and, and looking at the layers of your life. We do have a couple minutes. I know also if you're like me, you may want to use the restroom and transition. If there are any questions, comments, I'll take them. If not, I'll give you a few minutes back here. No. Yes, ma'am. You want to use the light? <laughs> hey, if I have to use it, so do you. Um, so um, I'm a product of all of that. Okay. Um, and I guess my my issue is that I do things that, that do fulfill me. Um, I do stay busy with things that fulfill me. And it's just like, I don't have enough time to do everything. It's like, I, I don't even want to go to sleep sometimes. So uh, it's finding that balance, I guess, um, to, to rest and, and have the energy to keep going. And I need like a group of other women who can relate to that. What city do you live in? Yes. All right. Any other women in South Bend need a community? Yeah. I like the community, but I like to sleep. <laughs> okay. Well, and Tiffany up here said, "Well, I can be a part of your community, but I like to sleep." So, um, but no. And, and, and I think events like this is how we find our community. If you're you're like me, I am naturally introvert. I am shy, but I I purposely make myself talk to women. Let me find women in this area. I've met some lifelong connections and friends from events like this. And so you do find someone to kind of help you drive those areas and, and give you some more of that personal fulfillment. College was a big place for me that I found a lot of those relationships. Um, sorry. Um, so Angelina's question or comment was that I'm very busy, but I also find fulfillment. But one of the areas that she does want to improve on is finding the community of women. Now she lives here in South Bend, so if there are any other women that need community, Here's an opportunity. But what I also said to her is that coming to events like this, this is where you find community. If you're naturally an introvert or shy, force yourself to talk to someone. Someone that doesn't look like you, someone who you may see. If you just look around, you can always usually see one woman who's off to herself. Talk to that woman. You know, you have to be intentional about finding community. And again, like I said, it, it says a lot about any woman that's here today. That means that that woman is already starting the process. They already understand the need to have community and to be intentional. So how much uh, easier would it be to foster some genuine friendships? And again, friendships at our age look a little different than when you were younger. 
It may just be an accountability partner. Hey, Angelina, did you go to grocery shopping today and eat healthy like you said you were? Okay, and so those are ways that we can try to find that community and build that with the community around us. Anyone else? Questions? Comments? Uh, it looks like, yes. Comment, you're fantastic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.